Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. Yesterday Google dropped a massive update obviously to the Android 11 development. We went from alpha to beta one and that means essentially is that a lot of companies are going to start being able to release their beta versions of Android 11 in the very near future. And we already kind of saw it. Oppo is going to be releasing it directly for their Find X2 Pro line as well as Xiaomi releasing it for the Mi 10 line. But today, let's focus on the new features on Android 11 or Android R on the Pixel 3a and the Pixel 3a XL. One's running Android 11 R beta 1 and the other one is still running Android 10. This is TK. Let's check out the differences and see all of the cool new features. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So what I have in front of us here is the Pixel 3a on the right side, the smaller of the two, uh, running Android 11 beta 1. On the left, I'm still running Android 10.0, running the latest update on the Pixel 3a XL. Now, both of them obviously are in that purplish color. Obviously, they look very similar, but the main difference here obviously is the software. Uh, beta 1 is available for Pixel devices on the market, so if you have a Pixel device and you'd like to test it out, I'd recommend you checking out their website. I'll give you guys a link in the description below. Uh, although I do recommend you at this point maybe waiting a little bit. Uh, the installation for me on the Pixel 3a was actually a little bit bad. Uh, my initial update that went from uh, Preview 4 to Beta 1 kind of crashed and it failed at the end and I had to do basically a total reset and then manually flashing my update back into Android uh, 11 Beta 1 by downloading the actual image which was 1.8 gigs. So. Uh, recommendation at this point, I would say wait, check out some of the cool new features in this video and of course we have the Pixel 3a XL here for comparison as to what we currently have on Android 10. Now the first feature I want to talk to you guys about today is voice access. Now that's something that is, we've had in the past but it's actually more contextually aware of where it is. Now I have it initiated with a button here mostly because I don't want to actually have it turned on all the time. You are able to have it basically present in your notification and we're also going to be talking about basically how our notification panel is now actually more functional than what we've had in the past. But the reason I want to do this for you guys is I'm going to go ahead and launch it and I'm going to show you guys how easy it is for me to send a tweet without actually having to touch my phone. So we'll go ahead and just launch it first. Open Twitter. Compose a new tweet. This is a test of voice access on the brand new Android 11 Beta 1 from my Pixel 3a. Now, to this point, I didn't even touch my phone. I asked it to open up Twitter, I asked it to compose a tweet, and I asked it to basically send it. And the really cool thing about it is, you don't actually have to just use numbers as we've done it in the past. So an example you'll notice right there, when we turn on the function, we actually see numbers for every single icon, and that's how we used to in actually interact with it. But now, as you saw before, I just asked it to tweet. I didn't ask it to actually click, let's go ahead and close this one, delete, and we'll go ahead and launch it. You'll notice there's a number associated with every single step, so we'll go ahead and turn it on. So, it would have had to actually hear me say the number 12 for it to actually initiate it. I didn't say that. I just said tweet and I started to talk because it not only went into the tweet, but it also went directly into the compose box. And I would have been able to send that out. And I've been using this also with Discord, other messaging applications, and it works really nice. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is really cool. We'll go ahead and open up YouTube Music. I already have it opened up here. So you'll notice obviously how the standard or the current version of the music player is present. I'll go ahead and launch something. So here and I'm just gonna pause it mostly because I wanna launch the player. I'll go ahead and close it. So now when I swipe down from the notification, you'll notice that my player is no longer sitting in my notification right above that notification that we got directly out of Hangout. It's actually sitting straight into my actual toggles at the top. So the reason behind that is it's because of the new system UI that's built in. You'll notice there's two tabs because I was watching a video on YouTube and obviously I launched the YouTube music application. Very nice, very easy. Uh, and of course, I'm able to still scrub through it, but that's something that we couldn't even done here. If I had YouTube and the YouTube music application running, both of them would have taken two bars for me and that would have taken up a lot more of my, uh, my UI as far as the notification panel. Very nice, very simple, and I'm able to basically interact with it. And of course, you'll also notice the new categorization for the new uh, notifications. So we have conversations, silent notifications, and you're able to interact with them in a different way. So let's go ahead and swipe up to the top and I'll swipe up again to the top. You'll notice here at the top left that there is a little icon. Let me go ahead and bring this device for you guys real quick. You can see here that there's actually my logo is sitting there as opposed to the Hangouts logo. And that's mostly because of the fact that actually within the actual system UI, now we're able to categorize notifications as priority. When you prioritize them, it no longer actually just puts them there as a standard notification, but it actually puts the icon so that you know exactly that I have a waiting priority message from myself, obviously, but if this was somebody else, 
sitting here in my notification panel. Very nice and very easy to recognize. But the main difference, of course, is the ability of categorizing our notifications as opposed to just having everything in the same section. So you'll notice here silent notifications like early access, uh, most used apps, and of course, uh, weather. Those are things that I generally don't interact with as much. But if I do want to access it, I can see them right there, but it puts my most important ones here. And of course, I can prioritize them even more by either just keeping them by normal alerting or giving them priority. And of course, you can go into the settings tab and then customize it even more. But again, once you give it the priority level, it actually becomes something that is priority for us. So the UI recognizes it and makes it an actual icon at the top, as opposed to just a notification that just says Hangout as we've had it in the past. And one of the really cool things that I like about it is the fact that our recent application now is bigger. And the reason behind that is, even though this is a smaller device than the XL, you can definitely see that the actual window is even bigger, even as opposed to what we have it there. Now we lost the search button and we also lost our uh, recommended application sitting on the back, but I feel like this is much more functional into what we normally do in our recent application. Now we're able to still scroll through, open up whatever we want, we have the ability of taking screenshots. We also have the ability of selecting text if this text is available. So right there, so you notice Sunset Lover right there, uh, about the tea biscuit, I'm actually able to select that. All the other options get highlighted and I can actually now know that I can actually just press and hold and of course highlight and do whatever I want. And if I'm just selecting the name, you'll notice it is contextually still smart enough to know that this is a song. Let me go ahead and look it up on Google Play Music but hopefully that will be replaced with the YouTube music because that application is going away. But again, search, copy, share, all of those things are normal. And of course, the screenshots are still available there. And now it actually comes with a new UI that enables it to sit on the bottom left and you can share or edit it right away. Uh, conversely, if you just hit the share button, it does the exact same function, except that it takes you straight into the actual sharing functionality. So you're able to jump in and customize that experience as well. But Overall, if you just want to be able to take a screenshot and maybe share it later, that's the button there. And of course, you can edit it right away or select the text and do a direct search from your recent application. Very nice. One of the really nice things as far as permissions, we also have a little bit more functionalities built into this as it, this is an iterative update to Android 11. Uh, so we now have the ability of doing either a deny, which we have before, allow to use only while using the application or ask every time. And of course, this options will also come up to you whenever you use a permission for the first time. Uh, the other option as well is the ability of actually giving uh, certain permissions an expiration date after a certain amount of time of not being used. So if you use the application and you forgot to use it for a few months, that application's permissions will automatically get revoked. And of course, when you use it again, it'll ask you for those permissions one more time. Definitely a nice improvement as to what we've had in the past. One of the other really nice things that I've, say, I've seen here as far as an actual update is the ability of customizing the actual back gesture that we have here. So under system, we'll jump on both gestures on both sides. And of course, what we're going to go here is under gestures, so system navigation. So both of them give us the ability. So we've had these options very much the same. If I go into the settings tab in the past, we only had the ability of setting the sensitivity for both right and left back gestures in one area. There is no functional uh, way of splitting them. Android 11 provides us now the ability of actually setting the sensitivity on both sides independent of each other. So I can actually set the sensitivity to be more sensitive on the left as opposed to the right. Or of course, I can keep them running the same. Uh, this is just a nice little functional thing that we kind of just forget or don't even recognize whenever we're looking at an Android uh, development update. But again, granular functional control that is always coming to Android. Now, by far, one of the biggest visual changes that we've seen on this device, obviously, is the ability of customizing our power menu. So I'll go ahead and press and hold the power menu and we'll go ahead and see what changed from last year to this year or Android 10 to Android 11. Now, first and foremost, we'll notice that the menu did change a little bit. The screenshot is actually where it's present here, reset power, and of course the emergency contact. Now, emergency contact power and restart are still there. The screenshot did actually kind of uh, move from that menu over to this menu. So that's the reason why we don't have it there. Uh, but I feel like it's actually, it's nice because um, again, it's something that is functional and we can always use it. You can always jump into recents wherever you are. Um, Google Pay functionality, so if you have your uh, access to that, if you have it set up on your device, it's still going to be present there and you're able to basically access your cards directly from the menu in there. I don't have it set up on this device, so that's why it's not there. But the home control, all of the functional automation controls that we normally get access to by using the Google Home application, so I'll go ahead and open up Google Home, are now present directly. So all of the lights, all the switches, and for me, by far, the ability of being able to actually open up and access my Nest camera, my front door camera, without having to install the Nest app or even using Google Home out of my lock screen is absolutely fantastic. That's a straight live shot directly of my front door. And of course, I can still control um, the different lights. You can see right there, my office lights are on, my son's, light, my, my son's room light is on. And of course, I can go in and customize it and add different functions. Currently, Google Home is the only one that's supported, but I cannot wait to see basically what, let's say, other developments as far as Samsung or other uh, ecosystems that use automations 
get themselves integrated here. As I can imagine, this entire section will be basically covered with Samsung Pay and of course, uh, smart things built in at the bottom. A few more things also, uh, also on the actual changes. We'll go ahead and press home. Uh, you'll notice right there, we have home settings, widgets, and styles and wallpapers. So we'll go ahead and jump into styles and wallpapers. And one of the things on the bottom you'll notice is now we have the ability to stylizing the styles, the clock, and the wallpaper. Although we only have basically one clock right now, but my understanding is hopefully we'll see some more. But under the style section, we're able to customize and add new functional icon shapes. So let's go ahead and swipe up to the right. You'll notice right there, they're actually kind of already there. I've already set up one custom option, but we'll go ahead and set up a new one. We'll go next. Obviously we still have the same options here, but we'll go next one more time. Color, keep that where it is. And then now we start looking at the actual icons that we have. So first and foremost here, we had basically four. We have now it was zero circular, a teardrop, somewhat of a rounded square and a standard square. Now we have teardrop. This is, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the shape stands for, but essentially it's more like a squeezed shape, the standard circular. We have the teardrop, somewhat of the uh, same one we've seen before. And of course, last but not least, the added one. So we can definitely see that they're trying to add more functional uh, options for us. Let's go ahead and customize that, take that out. And of course, you get able to set up your preset and just jump between the different presets that you want. And of course, enjoy it to your first preference. You can customize the background as well, but definitely some nice little, uh, I would say, aesthetical UI changes that are just starting to show up everywhere on Android 11. One of the other really cool functional things that we now have is the ability of actually customizing the experience on the home screen. So if I go ahead and press home and go settings, you'll notice for the most part, all we had is the ability of doing app suggestions and over uh, basically overview selection, which means for the most part, whenever we got in here, I can swipe up, it gives me the app suggestions over there, but I really had no way of customizing the experience here. Now we have the ability of going under home settings and then under suggestions. So we'll go ahead and basically get suggestions on home screen. And really the best way to describe it is let's say you have this row of applications, which generally doesn't change, but I don't want to keep this here. So I want to go ahead and move my Google Play Store up. It's going to recommend an application based on my usage. Now, in me testing out the system and setting up obviously my Google Play and home account, it did recognize that the Google Home application is something that I use quite a bit. So it pulled it up for my notification for my normal app drawer. And so when I swipe up, let's go ahead and uh, swipe up a little. Actually, I, I do need to pin it first. So we'll go ahead and do this. So uh, one thing you need to mention is once you have that new suggestion, if you like it, you do need to have to press and hold and say pin prediction so that it keeps it in the app drawer so that you're able to get out of this menu. But if you don't do that, and let's say just go ahead and bring back the old application that you had it before, it goes back to normal. And now if I swipe up from the normal app drawer, you'll see that home is literally the app, the one app that I've been using the most since I've installed Android 11 beta one. So very nice way of customizing it. If you don't want to interact with it, pretty much just disable that feature, but it is definitely nice to have right here. Next feature I want to talk to you guys about is uh, there's a new feature that's added to Android 11 that provides us the ability of supporting uh, USB Ethernet connectors directly in here. So we can actually share our internet connection with a USB Ethernet adapter. And what that means essentially is that using the internet that's on your mobile data that's provided on your smartphone with a mobile, you know, let's say a USB uh, Ethernet adapter, you can now connect your phone to a hub or a router and share your internet connection using that by just turning on this functionality. I really hope that this, uh, this setting does actually make it to the end. It is available currently in the developer preview. Uh, one, uh, well, sorry, developer preview four, as well as DP uh, beta one. So that's something that's very nice. Lastly, I also want to talk about the fact that we have native screen recording that's present here. We saw this last year with the preview on Android 10. It did get removed at the end. I really hope that this actually makes it here. It is very small, very easy to use. You turn it on, you set up the customizations, show touches, uh, turn on record. And when you start and actually go ahead and hit the start, it'll be on the top right next to the battery. It'll give you a small countdown. And at this point, that vibration just tells me that it is recording. And then once I'm done with it, all I have to do is tap the notification and it just goes away saves it directly into my gallery and I'm able to access it. And again, native video screen recording is beautiful and it's something that we should have had on Android for a long time. And as you can see now that my actual notification is broken up into three sections. So alerting notification, regular conversations, so all my chat conversations will be sitting at the top. And of course, at the bottom, we have silent notification with the other things that we just probably don't want to pay too much attention to. Um, again, all, of it, all I need to do is basically interact with it. That was that video that we just recorded and it looks really easy to interact with, very simple. One of the other small changes that they did also apply here is the ability of actually changing the name of the audio settings. So let's go ahead and turn on the settings right here. Let's move this to the side. Uh, now you notice before it used to be called volume. Now it's actually called sound. And of course, if you're playing music, it'll give you the ability of actually controlling where that audio is going from. So I'll go ahead and reduce the audio volume here just so that we don't have any copyright issues. And let's move this guy to the top and we'll go ahead and start playing some music. So I'll go ahead and play music here. So you notice music plays back. I still have the ability of customizing the music audio on it. Everything looks pretty much the same. Let's go ahead and open up 
uh, YouTube music and we'll start up some music here so that we can have some audio going on and we'll go ahead and bring it in and go back into volume hit the button and of course here you can say play media 2 and then you can select where the, the music can go to and that's something that is just a nice little update that we've had now we can select exactly where to play if you have a Bluetooth speaker or anything connected via Bluetooth you can select it from here or you can play it straight on the phone and control the actual toggle from one spot very nice and again minor updates but definitely very functional so all of the features that we talked about today are obviously a gradual upgrade we've seen some of these features come up with the preview one two three and four and obviously with beta one now they're a little bit more solidified and the build is a little bit more stable uh, now i am using this on a pixel 3a mostly because i did have some problems going from developer preview 4 to developer well the beta one uh, and that could have been attributed to the cable or the pc i'm using my recommendation at this point, this is still a beta. This is not a full functioning version to be able to use as a daily driver. If you have an extra device that happens to be a Pixel right now or hopefully in the near future, either a Xiaomi, a Mi 10 device or a Pixel, well, sorry, a, an Oppo Find X2 Pro as both of these devices have been announced by both of their companies, so Xiaomi and Oppo will be receiving the beta one in the near future. Um, definitely check it out. Those are things that are obviously going to be really cool. And I'd love to be able to see the flavor or the upgrades that we see from different companies. So this is what Pixel and Google wanted us to see on the beta one. What can we see or what can we expect that other companies will be able to provide us with their devices when they upgrade their devices? Now, uh, of course, as you can imagine, OnePlus will be releasing their version. They did that last year. Uh, this year, the announcement was a little bit different. We didn't hear any official announcement from Google of any other third party OEMs that will be supporting beta one. They're doing this on their own, which is probably due to the way they also kind of did the announcement. Uh, we just kind of woke up on Wednesday at around you know, in the morning and then everybody was starting to like, hey, Pixel updates are available. Uh, beta one is available. So short answer is this. If you have a Pixel device that you'd like to be able to test this out on, I'd recommend you using it, checking it out, seeing all the cool new features that are coming. Um, I'm really excited with the new power menu functionalities that they've added in there. The ability of integrating my automation functions directly in there from the power menu is super time saving. As opposed to have to unlock the device, jump into the home application, scroll down to find whatever little toggle that I generally use all the time are there, or even try to use the Google Assistant when actually having to speak it in an open public environment, I find that this is very, very functional. And of course, always done really in a good way with Android development. So let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of the new features? Are you excited to see this on some of your devices? Or if you have a Pixel device, will you be testing out the beta one? This is TK, thank you very much for the support. I'll see you guys in the next video.